In an article in Bioscience titled, How Did Sex Come About?, the author, Julie Schechter, wrote, Sex obviously occurs everywhere in nature, yet sex remains a mystery to researchers. Why sex? Sex takes much longer and requires more energy than simple cell division. Why did a process so blatantly unprofitable to its earliest practitioners become so widespread? The evolution of sex and its accompanying capability of reproduction is not a favorite topic of discussion among most evolutionists because no matter how many theories they invent, and they have contrived several of them, the evolutionists still must cross the inescapable hurdle of explaining the origin of and the purpose of the first fully functional female and the first fully functional male necessary to even begin the process of sexual reproduction. While various evolutionary theories attempt to explain why sex exists now, they simply do not explain the origin of sex, a true evolutionary conundrum. Biology textbooks on origins illustrate how amoebas evolved into various intermediate organisms which then evolve into amphibians and then reptiles and mammals and eventually humans, yet we never are told exactly when or how independent male and female sexes originated among so many of the millions of species. But the truth is, that somewhere along this evolutionary pathway, both the male and female gender were required in order to ensure the further existence of a particular species. So how do evolutionists explain this? When asked to answer questions such as, from where did males and females originate, or what is the evolutionary origin of sex, evolutionists fumble around for an answer. Different evolutionists give different answers, but they simply do not know. Consider the depth of the problem. How could nature randomly evolve a female member of a species that produces eggs and is internally equipped to nourish a growing embryo, while at the same time randomly evolving a male member of the species that produces sperm cells able to mobilize themselves within the reproductive organs of the female until they unite with the egg. And how is it that these eggs and sperm conveniently evolved so that they each contain half the normal chromosome number of somatic cells? Evolutionist Dr. Graham Bell in his book The Masterpiece of Nature, The Evolution of Genetics and Sexuality describes the dilemma in this way. Sex is the queen of problems in evolutionary biology. Perhaps no other natural phenomena has aroused so much interest. Certainly none has sowed as much confusion. The insights of Darwin and Mendel, which have illuminated so many mysteries, have so far failed to shed more than a dim and wavering light on the central mystery of sexuality, emphasizing its obscurity by its very isolation. Renowned evolutionist Philip Kitcher noted, despite some ingenious suggestions by orthodox Darwinians, there is no convincing Darwinian history for the emergence of sexual reproduction. Evolutionists continue to freely admit that the origin of gender and sexual reproduction still remains one of the most difficult problems in biology when viewed from a purely evolutionary model. In his book, The Cooperative Gene, published in 2001, evolutionist Mark Ridley wrote, evolutionary biologists are much teased for their obsession with why sex exists. Sex is a puzzle that has not yet been solved. No one knows why it exists. Some evolutionists have proposed a simple solution by suggesting that inheritance and sex were a historical accident a kind of accidental holdover from the era of a single-celled organism. They claim that the maintenance of sex is therefore a non-scientific question that leads to intellectual mischief and confusion. But this would imply that sex is useless and that it has been retained through the years merely by accident. Even evolutionists realize the necessity and the complexity of sexual reproduction. 
Evolutionists have practically been forced to concede that there must be some advantage to a system as psychologically, physiologically, and energetically complex as sex. Mark Ridley admitted when he wrote, It is highly likely that sex has some advantage, and that the advantage is big. Sex would not have evolved and been retained unless it had some advantage. Yet finding and explaining that advantage seems to have escaped the evolutionist. Sir John Maddox, who served for over 25 years as the distinguished editor of Nature, the prestigious journal published by the British Association for the Advancement of Science, authored a very telling book entitled, What Remains to be Discovered, in which he addressed the topic of the origin of sex, and stated very honestly, the overriding question is when sexual reproduction itself evolved. Despite decades of speculation, we do not know. The difficulty is that sexual reproduction creates complexity of the genome and the need for a separate mechanism for producing gametes. The metabolic cost of maintaining this system is huge, as is that of providing the organs specialized for sexual reproduction. What are the offsetting benefits? The advantages of sexual reproduction are not obvious. The fact that the advantages of sex are not obvious is well known, but not often spoken of within evolutionary academic circles. As it turns out, the common survival of the fittest theories cannot begin to explain the high cost of first evolving and then maintaining the sexual apparatus, organs, and functions. Sexual reproduction requires organisms first to produce and then maintain reproductive cells, sperm and eggs. There are a myriad of other interconnecting considerations when contemplating the whys and hows of sexual origins. For example, in sexual organisms, problems can arise regarding tissue rejection between the mother and the newly forming embryo. The human immune system is vigilant and seemingly very intelligent in identifying foreign tissue. Yet the evolutionist contends that the human reproductive system has selectively evolved. This elaborate, intelligent, pervasive, and, as they put it, expensive method of reproduction. So here is the conundrum. There is no naturalistic explanation that can account for the origin and maintenance of sex, sexual gender, sexual organs, sexual reproduction, and sexual interconnectivity to other body systems. It is, in fact, a scientific observation, based upon observable and demonstrated evidence, that the intricacy, complexity, and informational content associated with sexual reproduction simply demands the conclusion that sex is neither a historical accident resulting in evolutionary baggage nor is it a product of naturalistic evolution itself, but rather sex is the intentioned design of an intelligent creator.